Born on New Zealand's North Island in the village of Mokau, Chick Cooper, or Princess Murani Tiaramo Tewetni Maniapoto, as she was named, was the great granddaughter of the tribal chief. Chick was raised on 2,000 acres of farmland. As well as working the farm, her father was also pilot station master on the west coast. During her 20 years on the farm, Chick developed a love for music and animals and remembers with great affection some of the horses she owned, in particular her favourite, Tommy Starr. On her second visit to Australia in 1972, at the age of 42, Chick married Jack Gibbs, a well-known Newcastle rugby league identity. Chick's musical talent saw her become sought after as an entertainer in Newcastle and the Hunter area. An accomplished historian, Chick has compiled countless books on a wide range of subjects, including those of many Australian racehorses, like Farlap, Todman and Peter Pan. One of Chick's better known topics is that of Rose Hill Racecourse and the famous Golden Slipper Stakes. Luskin Star won the Golden Slipper race in 1977. I became very interested in the subject of racehorses and uh, being a, a horse lover myself, I thought he would make a very, very good subject to write about. The Golden Slipper in Sydney's Rose Hill Racecourse has synonymous with champion racehorses. Rose Hill today is a far cry from its humble beginnings when John Bennett purchased 140 acres of land and work began on the racecourse in 1883. Final cost of construction? 17,000 pounds, and the first race was held on the 18th of April, 1885. The name for the prestigious Golden Slipper originated from a pair of gold shoes worn by Mrs. Dot Ryder, who along with husband George, were owners of Woodland Stud in the Hunter Valley. April 6th, 1957, saw the running of the inaugural Golden Slipper Stakes, which was won by the mighty Todman, with Neville Selwood on board. Todman won the race by eight lengths after starting at six to one on. Despite the fact there were 11 starters, the result was never in doubt. Earlier that year, Todman had also won the Rose Hill Welter and was placed second in the Randwick Champagne Stakes. As a three-year-old, Todman continued on his winning way with a first place in the Canterbury Guineas. Todman did not race as a four-year-old, but as a five-year-old won the Canterbury Flying Handicap, the Flemington Lightning Stakes and the Caulfield Futurity Stakes, bringing the champion's total winnings to £20,805. Situated in the picturesque Rose Hill Gardens, the Golden Slipper Wall of Fame is a lasting tribute to Todman and the champions who have followed. In 1975, and Luskin Lodge in the beautiful Hunter Valley saw the birth of Luskin Star, or Roddy, as he was affectionately known by breeders and owners Jim and Maria O'Neill. Well, we got a phone call from Bema Star, and that's just going to say that promising had foaled, and it was a cult foal, and uh, we, being the first foal we've ever bred, we hurried up there to have a look at it. He was small. We thought beautiful. But uh, after we came home that day, we found out that he became very sick. And little Howie, the vet from Scone, rang us to say that, you know, it was touch and go. 
he had a bowel compaction. They, they did say that they thought that uh, he was foaled through the fence and it was quite some time before he got a drink from his mother with the result that uh, he didn't have that early colostrum which is, you know, so vital to them. But, uh, anyhow, he recovered from all that. We broke him in and he came back to, to uh, came back to our house, our stud, and we had a paddock there that was, you know, more or less reserved for colts. And uh, Max came. Max rang me one Saturday night after the races at Newcastle and asked him if, asked if he could come up and have another look at the horse. And uh, that's when we decided to sell him. He was passed in for 7000 and uh, the, the owners that finished up buying the horse was Mr John Balkham and he, uh, he came and asked me when the sales were over, did I know any horse that was passed in because he, he missed going to the sales and I told him about this horse because he was the only one I really knew that was passed in and I, I knew the horse, I'd seen him at the sales and I'd seen him before he went to the sales and uh, we drove to Maitland one Sunday morning and brought him for 8000 You know, you you always see something different, don't you? You, you uh, see things that other people can't see. And, uh, but he was always a handsome colt. And he grew into a very, very nice yearling. And after a little while, Johnny Barnett, uh, Johnny Borkham rang me up and he said, uh, you'll be happy to find out that the We've named the horse Lusk and Star. Yeah, which was rather fitting for our start at the top. The colt was purchased by racing syndicate Don Ninnis, John and Lynn Borkham and Barry Barnett. With trainer Max Lees and strapper Lee Cantwell, Luskin Star commenced his racing career at Broadmeadow and immediately set the racing scene alight. In the 1976-77 season, as a two-year-old, he won the Breeders' Plate at Warwick Farm by a massive 12 lengths, and the Silver Slipper Stakes at Rose Hill with John Wade on board against some of the industry's top horses and riders. Luskin Star's only defeat as a two-year-old was on his home track at Broadmeadow, when he was placed second to Mistress Anne in the Northern Slipper Stakes. Racing in the slipper of 77, a pretty level start and towards the outside, Princess Ryder and Tan Guy began fast and so did Mistress Anne, and Blazing Saddles is now scooting through in the centre looking for the lead, Pacific Prince hunting right up on the inside into a good spot and Lloyd Boy is prominent with Mondizo, Luskin Star is trapped out fairly deep in the early part, Princess Delaria up there with them and trapped out very wide as King's Frolic as they race through the gap onto the course proper and the Northern Philly Mistress Anne had booted clear, Let by more than two lengths on Blazing Saddles, Princess Talaria third, then King Frolic followed by Pacific Prince, which got a check, and then Luskin Star, Mondiso further back with King of the Stars, followed by Lloyd Boy Nayesco, and then Tan Guy, and a long way back, Princess Rada followed by Livon and Red Cat, into the straight, 350 to go, Mistress Anna's tackled quickly by Blazing Saddles, Blazing Saddles had raced to the lead, but here comes Luskin Star, Luskin Star, the Newcastle Colt with the Blazing Saddles in one straight. Lloyd Boy starting to run on well, but Luskin Star shot clear. He's a super cold all right. He's making... Up and away goes Luskin Star. He's racing style and spectacular. The pokies are crying, the fans are cheering. A Luskin Star. Luskin Star's great win on, of the Golden Slipper created a lot of interest. John Borkham, uh, whom I knew for many years, rang and asked me would I write a song for Luskin Star. I was delighted to do so. I then thought that I'd ring my friend Phil Marnie to get his opinion and uh, we discussed it and he thought it was a great idea. 
Along with my husband Jack, we spent a short time in the relaxing atmosphere of Blackbutt Reserve, writing the lyrics for the Luskin Star song. I then composed the music. When that was completed, Kerry Palmer, Debbie Myoski and Phil Marnie were contacted about singing the backing vocals. Phil doing the Phantom Race call, along with rhythm guitarist Gus Gestro, and myself on the Lowry organ. Ray Monarch's trumpeter introducing the race and recording engineer David Berryman. The demonstration tape was recorded in the Hunter Theatre at the Junction, Newcastle. Local musician Al Vincer was approached to write the musical score. Members of the Balkan Syndicate were invited to hear the song at our home in New Lambton. They're off and racing this time. Blazing Saddles was one of the first to show out over Miss Roseanne Pacific, Prince Mondiso and Princess Valaria. Settling in behind them now were King Strollick, Lloyd Boy, Ten Guy and Luskin Star up with those. Up and away goes Luskin Star. He's racing style and spectacular. His book is a crying the sand of tears. Alaskan star is the best in years. We've had some mighty champions on the race track through the years. Race the fame and glory amidst the million cheers. How far that will remember and good old Peter Pan. With Ajax and Glen As well as a song for Luskin Star, many Novocastrians produced their own tributes to the great champion. Well-known Newcastle artist Bill Freeman produced several paintings in his honour. Others remembered his victory through their skills with wooden sculptures, stipple illustration and needlepoint, Chick herself created this montage of the champion, which takes pride of place in a local Newcastle hotel. The Luskin Star Gardens were built at Broadmeadow Racecourse in his honour. Clark also joins all the Golden Slipper winners in the Rose Hill Gardens Wall of Fame. After his Golden Slipper win, Luskin Star was purchased by the Bart Cummings Stable and transported to New Haven Park Stud at Burrawa in southern New South Wales. This story on Strapper Lee Cantwell appeared in the Newcastle Morning Herald on November 6, 1977 and revealed how Lee felt as she said goodbye to the champion for the final time. Uh, big hole in my heart, really hurt. Um, just to realise that I wasn't going to have him anymore, it really hurt. Because he was so special. 
I always told myself that I was going to go and see him again, no matter what. But, um, you know, I had really deep, depressed thoughts on that day, I can tell you. I wasn't happy at all. Max rang me up that day. He passed on. He had a, a cry on the phone and I had a cry. It was a sad time. She was such a good horse girl. So he'd become a stallion at New Haven Park Stud and he's podgered and he... Um, what was it? A couple of million in prize money. Very good stallion. He's just one in a million. He's a freak horse. Very lovable. Temperament, he had some funny tactics. If you walked in with another horse, he used to, if you let him have a little bit of rain, he'd quickly go and go to grab the other horse on the chest, just plain, gentle, and come Dark. back up. Yeah. He just, then you pick him back up and he'd be good again. But, no, I mean, 